I remember it like it was yesterday. It was my second semester of my freshman year uh, here at Ozark Christian College. And I was sitting in my dorm room and I was kind of having one of those come to Jesus moments where I realized this isn't high school anymore. I can't just continue to skate by. I can't just um, put in minimal effort and get good grades, not here. For the amount of reading and the amount of memorization and dealing with Greek and it, it was so much that I had to actually look at myself in the mirror and say, Shane, enough's enough. Do you want this? It was in that moment where I not only committed to a life of self-discipline, to dive into the study of the word here at Ozark, simply because it was where I was, but it was because I was also passionate. I desired, it lit a fire in me, something that frankly in high school I'd never really experienced. And then I began to pray. Pray and meditate on Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask and it will be given to you, Jesus says. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. This is an incredible promise. There is almost so much authority in this that, that as a you know evangelical rationalist, I'm, I'm pretty concerned about embracing it. <laughs> as someone from the Protestant movement that's been birthed out of the legacy of Luther, I'm a little bit hesitant because this sounds kind of like a, you know, a, a name it and claim it gospel, kind of like a... Um, you know, a health and wealth type situation. If you ask, it'll be given to you. Well, give me a million dollars. Well, that's not, that's not what Jesus is talking about. <laughs> He's talking about an intimate relationship. He goes on to bring that ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. He goes on to give it a context that changes not only what it is he is saying, but ultimately even what we ask for. He says, which of you, if your son asked for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? Like for me as a dad of four, <laughs> I tell my kids all the time, I, I want to give you good gifts. It's my heart's desire. I don't want to put you in timeout. I don't want to have to take away your Xbox. I wish... All I had to do was talk to you about the next good gift I was getting you. The reality is, is there are times when I have to sit them down and say, you've gone astray. You're out of line. However, my heart is to give my children good gifts. And if they came and asked me for bread, I wouldn't say, here's a stone, laugh, walk away, like I gave them what they wanted. That is called evil. <laughs> Or if they come to me and they ask for a fish, something to eat, basic needs. I don't give them a snake, especially one that's venomous. To just, no. What I give them is not only what they ask for, but I desire to give them even more. But then Jesus says this in verse 11. If you then, though you are evil, which is true, <laughs> know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? As a second semester freshman, I sat in my dorm room and I asked the Lord for the first time for something. Something that, that frankly, my goal was not to be selfish. It was probably one of the more pure asks I've ever asked. I sat in my dorm room and I asked the Lord the same thing that Solomon asked God in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 9 through 12. I said, Lord, give me wisdom. Please, Lord, give me insight to the world around me. Give me wisdom to discern your word. Give me wisdom to live my life in such a way 
that it leads to the foot of the cross. Give me wisdom. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. In a dream, Solomon is interacting with the Lord. And in verse 9, Solomon says this, So give your servant a discerning heart. Give your servant wisdom. A discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. Notice that, to distinguish between right and wrong. We're going to come back to that. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? And the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. As a matter of fact, the Lord almost gets giddy. So he said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, health and wealth, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, vengeance, but you've asked for wisdom. You've asked for discernment in administering justice. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that, you will never ha- so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. The reason why wisdom is such an important path to walk, which frankly, the Old Testament especially talks about wisdom um, in romantic terms. There is something about wisdom that is an immeasurable gift that frankly, much of the world and many of us Christians overlook. To be able to discern what is right and wrong. To be able to look from the 30,000 foot view, to see 15 steps ahead, And to know that if we topple this domino, it may affect this down here. And if we don't want it to affect this down here, then maybe we should stop doing what we're doing now. But as I reflect on wisdom, there's two things that come to my mind. First, our God is a good God. He desires to give us good gifts. But let's make sure that we're asking for gifts that don't just benefit us, that benefit everyone around us. And the second thing that comes to my mind is this. Solomon was an incredibly wise person who was able to distinguish between right and wrong. But wisdom is the identification of what is right and what is wrong. But courage, boldness, perseverance, integrity are the actual things that allow you to choose what is right, that compel you to choose what is right. Because Solomon teaches me what to pray for here, but his life cautions me on the path of wisdom, that you can be wise and still not be holy. For Solomon's track record of thousands of wives and concubines and greed and is a cautionary tale. That being wise does not equal being holy. My prayer for you this week is this. Pray for wisdom. Ask an incredible father to give you this immeasurable gift. But then also pray for the boldness to walk the path of what is right. I love you guys. Have a good week.